Good morning and welcome to my first installment of Office Hours where I answer any questions that you have about creative wellness, ego management, anything at all, um, any random question, I will be delighted to riff on it in one of these Friday morning sessions, which hopefully will, will be concise. They won't be more than, you know, 10 minutes, hopefully. Oh, hey, Kathy, how are you? Okay, so today's question comes from Neil, who says, I wouldn't be surprised if most creative people are struggling being creative during a long pandemic and the country falling apart. Is being creative even helping anyone if it's not pushing a political agenda or helping the world in any way? Which is a very pertinent question. I'm sure we've all been wondering iterations, very similar versions of this question. So the two pieces that I'm gonna answer, which I've, I've pulled out of this question, are the self-flagellation <laughs> and the, what's the, I'm looking at my notes. Um, oh, and the fear of irrelevance, right, okay. So before we get started, let me point out that Neil, who asked this question, he is Neil Ochka on Instagram and everywhere else, I think. His blog is called Citizen of the Month. He's been doing this really hilarious series of photographs, uh, pandemic uh, lockdown photographs. Um, he is uh, trapped in a, an apartment in Queens, I think Queens, with his mother and ex-wife. So, um, and they're, they're good friends, obviously, or else they would have murdered each other by now. Um, but these pictures are hilarious, and I believe that they are absolutely relevant to what is going on right now. It provides a much needed comic relief, so. Um, but, you know, part of, part of Neil's, um, um, part of his sensibility, I think, is, is self-flagellation, which, you know, can be very funny, but. Um, anyway, okay, so first of all, if you are one of those people who has found it incredibly challenging to get any sort of creative work done in this environment over the last 10 months, you are not alone, and I would like to remind you that you are not a robot. Uh, your, your goal in life should, your creative goal in life should not be to become a cyborg and to be able to somehow power through in the midst of, uh, you know, potentially losing your loved ones, uh, po possibly losing your job, your day job, um, all, all the economic instability that we've been experiencing. This is a lot, this is a lot to, to live through and Give yourself a break. I mean, you want to live in a more loving world, right? Then you have to start with yourself. So that's point number one. Recognize when you are self-flagellating and, you know, implement those um, self-supportive practices, which I'm very specifically saying self-supportive instead of self-care, uh, you know, because I think that's become um, quite a problematic concept, concept, but that is a topic for a different video. So, okay. Um, okay, so moving on to the fear of irrelevance. Let's get this out of the way. There will always be people who will find your work irrelevant in, you know, times of relative stability and times of chaos, such as right now. There are always going to be people who, you know, might even tell you um, to be one of those nasty people online who tells you that your work has no value. Well, that's their very subjective opinion and you are free to ignore them and indeed you should ignore them. So, um, we've gotten that out of the way. Okay, so here's my guideline and so I'm going to start with the general guideline and then I'm going to tell you exactly how I'm implementing it in my own uh, creative life and creative practice and in my own career in publishing. Um, so we're going to start general, get specific, I'll give you a specific example. So my guideline is when things are, when things are going down and there's, you know, I feel a lot of concern, I feel a lot of rage, 
um, you know, about racial injustice and all of these socioeconomic inequalities that have really been thrown into stark relief by all of these, the conditions of the pandemic. I think about the, 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 the intersection between what I'm concerned about and what I'm raging about and my own unique sensibility what I bring to the table, what my, what my perspective is, what my, um, what my skills, what my unique skill set is. I find that intersection point and that is the place where I can create work that, you know, hopefully people will find relevant. So this is my example and it's twofold because, you know, on the one hand we've got my novel writing and then on the other hand, we've got my, uh, my membership in the literary community and the responsibilities that come with that as a white writer, right? Okay, so first we'll talk about my, my novel writing. What, what concerns me, what enrages me? So years ago, um, I you know read my first Connie Willis novel. I think it was back in college. It was a really long time ago. And I adore Connie Willis. I, I adore her time travel novels. However, she is very much a white science fiction writer. And I was really, I felt angry on, on behalf of a fictional character in one of her novels. Okay, so I should give you some background for anyone who hasn't read her Oxford time travel series. This is time travel for historians, for and by historians. And there is a lab at Oxford, I believe this is in the 2050s, where uh, there are technicians who um, get the actual time travelers, and these are usually uh, grad students in history, get them prepared for their trip back in time. So very cool premise, right? So the thing that enraged me is that one of these technicians, who's also a grad student, I believe, his name is TJ, and he is a man of color who explains to one of the protagonists, who is white, of course, that he is never allowed to time travel because it's not safe for him to be anywhere. And my first thought was, well, are you, are you telling me that there is no point in history anywhere on the African continent where this grad student can't go back in time and have an adventure of his own. And yeah, there are, it's always going to be dangerous. But that felt like such a massive cop-out. A massive cop-out. And, you know, these stories only ever happen in England. And, uh, you know, as much of an Anglophile as I am, I see how problematic that is. And I'm trying to tell stories that don't revolve around, you know, the, the Gothic literature of, or that inspired by the Gothic literature of, of the British Isles. Like, let's, let's, let's move on. Um, which leads me to my second, the second part, which is, being a, a better, more responsible, more aware, self-aware, and more active member of the, the, the kid-lit community and then more broadly, the, lit, the literary community. I think I need some water. So I've been really up, up my own belly button, so to speak, um, working on getting a new online course out, which dropped on New Year's Day. And I've, I've let a lot of things slide that I said this was important to me. So on the topic of time travel and decentering whiteness in time travel, which is the, the thing that I feel most passionate about, and so it's the intersection of racial justice and my thing, my sensibility. I am obsessed with time travel. And, and I'm currently working on a time travel novel and I'm gonna be thinking about how I can decenter whiteness in this time travel novel without appropriating the the awareness or the you know using a narrator creating a narrator who is a woman of color it's not my place to do that um, so I have to figure out how I'm going to decenter whiteness without appropriation 
So I will figure that out. It's still early stages, um, but getting back to part two, which is how can I be a more um, supportive, uh, you know, more authentic, because, you know, we all talk about how we need to wake up and blah, 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 blah. But like how, how specifically are, am I going to do this and, and do it on a consistent basis? So the idea is rather than, you know, do that whole checklist thing, which is quite, I don't know if ghoulish is the word, but it's certainly exploiting the people that you're claiming you want to support when you do the checklist thing, when you say, oh, I need to have a binary character in my, or non -bi a non-binary character in my next novel. I need to have a person of color in my next novel. No, do not do that. Where was I going with this? Um, okay. Oh my gosh, I'm having a brain blip. I'm sorry. So let me, let me talk, walk my talk, yes. Okay, so this is this is a book that I've been meaning to post about on Instagram for a while. Um, I, I need to be better about posting what I'm reading on Instagram. And I think my my jam is in terms of signal boosting is I'm gonna focus on children's novels um, that are written by women of color. And this one happens to be a time travel novel, so this is pretty perfect. So like, why, why has it taken me, I read this book, I think back in October, why, is it ta why has it taken me so long to put it on screen and say, read this book? It's wonderful, it made me cry, of course. It's about having an adventure with, you know, your grandfather when you're the same actually, Roughly the same age, um, but back in you know back in Harlem in in the 1930s, I think. Um, wonderful book. So I need to be promoting signal boosting this work on a consistent basis. So that's that's number two. Um, so let me get back and to Neil's original question um, because I, I I feel like I've gone off on a tangent here. Um, I think the the ultimate the point that I'm ultimately trying to make is don't ever feel like you need to write or make art about what is going down um, when we're living in the midst of chaos because as long as you are engaged as long as you stay curious your imagination is going to do its job um, as long as you're asking the right questions, your imagination will do its job and you will end up writing in response to what is happening, even if, or making art in response to what is happening, even if what you've written or what you've created isn't about the pandemic or about racial injustice, etc. per se. So that's everything I have today. Uh, if anyone has a question for me, I have another juicy question coming up next week from Avi. Um, please leave me a comment under this video uh, or you can, you can leave me a comment anywhere. Send me a DM um, and just you know ask me whatever is on, on your mind and I will um, hopefully provide a useful answer for you. So thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful Friday, and I will see you next week. How do I end this thing? <laughs> <laughs>